Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. This year we are celebrating the 10th anniversary of your favorite TV show. Once again, we have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We support them to become more productive, get better yields, and increase their income. We meet families and enter their kitchens to explore what we eat, where we get it, and how we can cook it in cleaner, faster, healthier, and cheaper ways. And at the same time, increase family nutrition. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice. While also learn from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they shape up their shambas. Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shepa. Today we are in Iata in the county of Machakos. Machakos is famous for its movies. Wow, Tony, why don't you introduce the show in the style of... Welcome to Shamba Shepa. Wait, 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 that must be Donald Trump. Hey, look, keep joking. Really? Akode, definitely. Really? Yes. Caro? Yes. Welcome to Shamba Shepa. <laughs> Not really, that must have been. Today's farmer is Victoria. Victoria has been farming for seven years. She grows green grams, maize, and she's also just started out to grow orange flesh sweet potatoes. Victoria has been farming well, but she needs some expert advice to give her the extra push. Victoria! Hi. Yeah, Karibuni! Karibuni! Good to see you. Ah. Karibu. Karibu. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. How are you? Fine, thank you. A and how is the farming here? That is good. Uh -huh. Raining cats and dogs. Ah. It's raining heavily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you, are you happy about the rains? We are happy. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Because uh, last time it was very dry, was yeah, it? Yeah, it was very dry. Mm -hmm. There was no rain. There must be maybe some challenges you're going through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When it's raining like this, we can't cultivate. Your land. There are a lot of weeds. Okay. Because you can't cultivate when it's raining. All right. So mm -hmm. we are still waiting for the rain and then we'll cultivate. Is there any other problem you're facing? This fall and warm is still destroying our maize. We are still spraying, mm -hmm. but... It's a it, menace. Yeah. It's giving you problems. Problems. It's giving you headaches. Now and then. You mm -hmm. cannot sleep We cannot peacefully. sleep thinking about it. And oh. Victoria, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You're not alone, I can uh -huh. tell you that. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. Yeah. Now, how about your sweet potatoes? They are doing good. Which sweet kind of sweet potatoes are you planting? Are they the orange ones? Or orange, the ones? orange, the orange, not ones. white, yeah, yeah. orange. Uh -huh. Had yeah. you grown white ones before? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Coming up, we learn about the best practices for growing orange fresh sweet potatoes successfully. We also discover how push and pull technology is fighting back against fall armyworm. Sweet potatoes are a common food crop in Kenya. However, Farmers are beginning to see the benefits of growing orange flesh sweet potatoes due to its higher nutritional values and increased market value. I meet with Victoria to know why she's picked on this variety. Victoria, yeah. when did you start uh, planting sweet potatoes? Last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you say these sweet potatoes are which variety? Orange. Orange flesh sweet potatoes. Yeah, yeah. Why orange fleshed sweet potatoes? They are delicious. Uh -huh. A lot of vitamins. Yes. And we sell. Ah. Yeah. When you harvest, do you get a lot of it? Yeah, we get a lot. Whereby we can eat, we have enough for our family and we sell the rest. Ah. That yeah. is good. Yeah. Ah, I can see our expert is waiting for us. Uh -huh. Let's go meet him. Thank you. Okay. The need for an economical, in-demand, nutritious and low-input vegetable is essential to improving farmers' lives in Kenya. One such vegetable that is addressing many of these concerns is the Orange Flesh Sweet Potato or OFSP for short. The orange flesh sweet potato is currently a readily available crop 
that is easily planted and maintained and offers excellent potential when selling to markets. Victoria has a large amount of orange flesh sweet potato and has been growing since September 2019. Moses Wamalwa, an agronomist from SIP, has come to see how Victoria is managing her orange flesh sweet potato plants. Moses, good to find you here. Good to see you too. I can see you've already inspected the potato field. Oh yes, I've gone round. And you have a lot of observations. Yeah, quite a number us. of observations. You yes. have to hold them for now because I want to find out from her how she got to this stage okay. right now. Yeah. Now, Victoria, yeah. when you started planting sweet potatoes, what's the first thing that you did? I prepared my shamba. Yes. And then I got certified seeds. Aha. And then branded. Isn't that the most important thing, first of all? Mm -hmm. I think that's the most important aspect that mm -hmm. determines yield of sweet potato. Uh -huh. yes. Now, why did you decide on uh, orange flesh sweet potatoes? It adds a lot of vitamins. Mm -hmm. And when we get a lot of yield, we sell. You get lots of yield? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that is fantastic. Exactly. And I can see you smiling in oh, hearing yes. that. I want to tell You're her. almost busting out oh, laughing. Exactly. <laughs> so. Because orange flesh is there is really nothing that you waste. Right from the roots up to the top. Okay. The now, now let, let's go quickly through your observation. What did you see? Generally, I think the first aspect that I'm happy with is she got material from a certified uh, vine multiplier. Mm -hmm. But there are a few things that she needs to really improve on. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things, obvious things I've been able to see around yes. is the weeds. Ah, here they this, are. These weeds need yes. to be cleared. Uh -huh. Yeah. You remove them. You you remove why them. do you have weeds here? It's raining. Mm. and we can't remove them when it's raining. So we are waiting for the rain. After it rains, mm -hmm. we'll remove the weeds. Oh, when the rain stops, you start removing the weeds? Yeah. What, how, what would you recommend about that? That is not very good because uh, we actually do not even know how long the rain is going to take. Yeah. So as soon as the weeds come, they need to be removed because they compete with the crop. Mm -hmm. Actually, three weeks after planting, you yes. should be removing the first weed uh, uh -huh. through weeding. The other aspect that we have been able to notice here is the plant population seems to be low. You can see this plant is here. Mm -hmm. The next plant is supposed to be one foot from this plant, it's supposed to be around there, but you can count. Yes. Uh, the next plant is here. You can actually see that this space, this space here requires more plants in here. Yeah. yeah. To get maximum profit from your farm, plant your orange flesh sweet potato vines at a spacing of one foot or 30 centimeters apart from each vine. Then I think one other aspect that she really needs to work on so much is ensuring Ridging is done properly and putting the soil to the crop to the level that is required because that is really very key in terms of yield of the crop. This ridge looks a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. so it needs to be a little bit smaller, so it has an effect on, on the plant population yes. and also the yield mm -hmm. and even the size of the roots that we are able to get. Ah, how big so should we it need, be? We, the, it's supposed to be one meter wide. Mm -hmm. From the furrow, mm -hmm. this furrow you are supposed to have one meter wide. Okay. Yeah, and then it's supposed to be raised up because it is eroded. Mm -hmm. When it's eroded like this, then you don't have the right size of roots that you would want to get. Okay. So ah. we require what we call healing, bring the soil closer to the plants up, up, and up, 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 up bring the up. soil like this. Mm -hmm. You, yeah. keep, you keep bringing. You keep bringing. You keep and, bringing. And, 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 like, and, like yeah, maybe. You have a jambe like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you, you keep bring healing. the soil. Yeah. How high is the hill? The hill is supposed to be a minimum of 30 centimeters. 30 centimeters. 30 centimeters. That's a foot. Mm -hmm. You bring soil from the furrow. Yeah. You can do that. And this is really important because Let me there are pests that come. Mm -hmm. And they are able to access the, the plant from the bottom. Yes. So if you don't heal up, yeah. they are able to penetrate from the bases. So Victoria, uh -huh. how big was this hill when you started? Did you put the soil up? And no. It, yes. Not this size. Uh -huh. It was in small size. Ah, uh, it was small size. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To get a good size of sweet potato, the size of the ridge should be one meter wide and the ridge should be at least 30 centimeters high. She also needs to inspect her farm routinely. At least every three days you're on the farm and trying to see which plants 
are not good enough, then they were able to, to remove them. The other thing I'm able to see is some of the plants are Can you uh, see infected. One? Whatever you are seeing, the fur that is on the plant here is the effect of mites. Okay. When mites affect the plant, they suck mm -hmm. and the plant reacts by producing mm -hmm. fur. Mm -hmm. It's a way of a protective measure. So these kinds of plants will not yield well. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you don't want to spread the crop, mm -hmm. you actually remove them, okay. Okay. pull them out. So, yes. so that means general inspection of the, of the shamba. Routine inspection. inspection. Yeah. So Victoria, yeah, when you look at your, at your crop here, mm -hmm. is there something you can see physically? Yeah, these holes. Uh -huh. These holes, they are caused by caterpillars. Eh? Yeah. The larval stage of the butterfly. Mm -hmm. We rarely uh, recommend spraying mm -hmm. because eventually if it's not an outbreak, the plant is able to manage that. Oh, to okay. manage that. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, Moses, let me ask you, how much yes. does Victoria expect to get from one vine? Yeah, in terms of root numbers, yes. you'll get three roots, medium size, to about six roots wow. per plant. Can, it, can, it, can, it, can, can you get more with good management? If you do good management, timely weeding, good healing up, you can up that to even eight roots. Eight? What do you think of eight? It's nice. From one? Yeah. Wow. Nice. You can. Yeah. Good expert advice and good farm management. Mm. Okay, Moses, thank you. Okay. So, farmers. If you grow quality orange flesh sweet potatoes, you can sell them at markets as fresh roots or sell them to a processor for a better price. Make sure to keep some at home for the family too, as orange fleshed sweet potatoes are good for your family's health. If you'd like to find out more on how to start growing orange fleshed sweet potatoes, please get in touch with iShamba. SMS the word JOIN to 21606. Coming up after the break, we learn about weed control and safe use of herbicides after planting. And we see how fall armyworm is being controlled by push-pull technology. You're back on Shamba Shape Up. We are still here in Machakos County in Victoria's Shamba. Still to come on today's show, we learn about weed control and safe use of herbicides after planting. And we see how fall armyworm is being controlled by push-pull technology. Victoria is having trouble with her maize due to fall armyworm invasion. Hi, Victoria. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. This is... This is bad. It's full and warm. It's destroying my mains. Mm -hmm. And not only mine, even to my neighbors. Everywhere around Everywhere here? Everywhere in Machakos County. Have you ever heard of a method called push-pull? No. Push-pull technology? No, 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 no. Oh, yes. You're in luck because we in Shamba Shape Up, mm -hmm. Together with ICP, I'm introducing push-pull technology to farmers just like you mm -hmm. to fight this pest. The fall armyworm is a menace in our country and indeed in the world. So I went to Bitter Point in Homa Bay County to learn more. Instead of relying upon pesticides and chemicals to control harmful pests such as fall armyworm, striker weed and stem borer, Many farmers are using a biological control method called push-pull technology. Don't worry, it's not as complicated as it sounds. Push-pull is where maize is intercropped with a plant called desmodium. This desmodium gives off a natural smell that pushes destructive pests away from the maize. Napier grass is then planted around the plot, which also gives off a natural smell that pulls pests away from the maize. Push, pull. The International Center for Insect Physiology and Ecology, ICPE, is on a mission to help reduce poverty and promote food security by developing control for both harmful and useful insects for organic and biological farming methods worldwide. Dickens Nyagol is a technician for ECP who can explain more. 
How is push pull being accepted around Africa or all over the world? Push pull is accepted all over. It started in Western Kenya, and then uh, over a period of time, it has covered other parts of Kenya. It has gone to East Africa, Southern Africa, and lately it has been taken in five, the five countries in West Africa. Mm -hmm. Actually, the demand for push pull now, because of the fall of um, innovation, which has also gone to Asia, it's now required even not only in Africa, but also beyond. So the impact is being felt? The impact is being felt because of the multiple uh, problems being addressed by push pull. Of course, fall army one, but there is also the striker weed, the stem borer, soil fertility improvement, and of course, fodder for the livestock. Victor is a farmer in Kisumu County who manages a great example of a push pull plot. Thank you so much. Karibuni, karibuni. So what, what exactly are you doing right now? Uh, this is my desmodium chamber. Uh -huh. I'm weeding it. I'm weeding at the same time I'm weeding the desmodium bit. I'm also weeding the maize plant also. Uh -huh. Managing a good push pull project like yours, how does a farmer maintain it? The important thing is weeding in push pull. Because mm -hmm. there are a lot of weeds and there's the maize plant also which requires proper weeding. Yes. You just pull them, you loosen the soil around the roots and then you pull. You pull them out. You just pull them out. Mm -hmm. How tall should the desmodium be compared to the maize? How we manage it when it's young, mm -hmm. you like you plant them at the same time, but then the desmodium comes up faster than the maize initially. So you can trim it so mm -hmm. that the maize overtakes it and then the maize take over. This maize, how do you space it? The row, one row to the next row is 20 feet. So that is about 75 centimeters. And from one seed to the other? The maize in between is about a foot. Yes, Just a foot. About 30, yeah, 30 yeah, centimeters. Yeah, 30 centimeters. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so let us take a look at how your plot can be turned into a successful desmodium and apia grass or bracaria grass push pull shamba just like Victor's. First, clear your land during the dry season. Desmodium has small seeds and prefers to be planted in fine soil. So that means no lumps. Measure and mark out your push pull plot to a maximum size of 50 by 50 meters. If you are planning a bigger push pull plot, then still split your land into 50 by 50 meter plots. ECP recommends three rows of napier grass or bracaria grass to be planted around the border of the maize plot. Marking and spacing are important. A napier or bracaria grass should be planted 75 centimeters between rows and 50 centimeters between napier grass plants or bracaria plants within a row. Ensure your maize is one meter away from the inner row of napier grass or bracaria grass. And remember, weeding between the desmodium and the maize is very important. On his chamber, Victor has two plots right next to each other. One plot with push-pull and one plot without. He simply hasn't got around to planting push-pull in both plots. Yet each area is completely different when it comes to pests. Now, Victor, you've been doing push-pull for quite some time now. How has push-pull helped you as a farmer so far? I've got that chamber down there. I didn't apply the push-pull method. Full animal had interested the plot down there. Yes. And I cried. You cried? I cried. <laughs> and I went and I bought some, they, they talk of granules you pour into the, into the plant. But this chamber, I've hardly seen any maize plant infested with armyworms. So what do you plan to do with that side? Next time I want also to push put method there because there's a very big advantage. What other advantage have you seen? Nowadays I don't have striga in my chamber. Ah, Another. Striga is gone. I don't see it. Yeah, the advantage, it helped me in my feeds for my cattle. Mm -hmm. Very good feeds. Have you seen an increase in your milk production? A lot of increase. Every time I don't have enough desmodium, milk production goes down. How about the harvest, when you compare the harvest that you are getting now? The maize that is infested with armyworm, the maize won't be pleasant to look at. Yes. But uh, the one that is not infested, you get a very good size of a maize. Well done, you're doing a very good job. Hey, thank you. And keep it up. Hey, thank you. Keep it thank up. You. We you. don't want to see you crying anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we want to see you smiling. For no more crying on your farm, 
Please contact Aisha Mba for further information. SMS the word JOIN to the number 21606. This is very good information for Victoria and her neighbours and hope they put it to good use. Hey, 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 Victoria. Yeah. All these are weeds. No, no. Huh? These are green grams. But how do you manage the weeds? We cultivate and sometimes use our hands to remove them. You use your hands? Yeah. Uh, maybe sometimes with the uh, jambes, pangas? With the jambes, pangas, and also we remove with our hands. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And you don't use any kind of herbicides? No. You're in luck. Thank because you. Because our expert is ready to give you advice and way forward on how to manage and control your weeds. Thank you. Are you ready for that? I'm ready. Let's go and beat him. Yeah. Having seen how Victoria and other farmers like herself are struggling to control weeds on their shamba due to the rains, we felt it is essential that Victoria knows and understands how to keep her farm clean and weed free. Regular spraying with herbicides is a good practice to use. Eric Kiongo is an agronomist and field officer from Parfeed and he's come to show Victoria some good ways to improve her fight against weeds. Eric. This is Victoria's Green Grams Shamba. Yes. What can you tell us about the Shamba? For the crop, yes, she really tried. Mm -hmm. But uh, for weed management, it's uh, a, a big problem. Why do you say that? Yeah, you can see the, the, the weeds are competing with the crop. And the weeds are actually happier than the, the crop itself. Mm -hmm. They are healthier. Yeah. Victoria, mm. what happened? It's because of rain. We have cultivated for the first time. Mm -hmm. And it has started raining. It's been raining every, every day. day. Every day, every day. And it day. keeps raining. Yeah. So you can't cut fate when it's raining. Mm -hmm. We are still waiting for the rain. Yeah. To you stop. See. To stop and then continue. Yeah, reading. you see, uh, Victoria, these are always the excuses of all the farmers. Mm -hmm. We always blame the bicycle when we fall. Yeah. Uh, there is a solution for this. Mm -hmm. Habi said is the only way okay. to go. Uh -huh. Yeah. So are you going to show us how to do this? Definitely, yes. That's why I'm here. Wow. Yes. Let's do this. Okay. So, Eric, I can see two knapsacks here. Yes. What is the difference between the two? Because all I know is that they do the same work. Yeah, no big difference in the knapsacks. But uh, the only difference is the nozzles. You see, you have two different nozzles which perform different activities. All right. Yeah. So, Victoria, yeah. this is your knapsack. Yeah. This is what you've been using. Yeah. Uh, in the farm as a whole, you even use it on your animals? Yeah, in my animals mm -hmm. and also in the farm. In the farm? Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, to some extent, yes and no. Because, uh, yeah, not many farmers can afford knapsack mm -hmm. for the livestock and knapsack for the, for the farm yes. activities. Mm -hmm. But what we encourage our farmers is they make sure that after uh, spray application, they clean the knapsack thoroughly. Okay, let's go straight into it. Yes. What does the red mean? What does the yellow mean? Yeah, I will take you through the functions of this pump. Mm -hmm. But before this, can I put on the PPEs first? Then I... PPEs? Yeah, personal protective equipments, the protective gears. Uh -huh. Because we don't uh, accept, uh, we don't allow our farmers to handle knapsacks or anything related with chemicals uh, before putting on the PPE. So it's like a uniform? Yeah, sure. Victoria, have you ever had a PPE? I've heard about it, mm -hmm. but I don't have it. You just go juakali. I just got your car. Kienyeji. Kienyeji. <laughs> okay, but right. from today, uh -huh. I'll be using them. Good, we are learning fast. All yeah. right, do you yeah. think? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. What? Car. Yeah? You can Look see? at him. He's smart. This is a total transformation. This is the PPEs we recommend as perfect. Uh -huh. You need the goggles. All right. You need the gloves. You need the coveralls and the gumboots. Uh -huh. That is very important. You can't spray without this. Okay. Uh, it is not in because when you are spraying, the spray might come in your... In contact with your in the, skin. In your skin, uh -huh. which is very bad. So it is important it drains uh -huh. from outside. So you are well covered. Yeah, sure. You are now ready for battle. Now I am good to go. Wow. Yep. Let's do this. Yes. Yes. Quickly, I wanted to tell you about the nozzle. Okay. This is what we call nozzle. All right. Yeah, this one. Uh -huh. You see, this is a red nozzle. Okay. Uh, we have three main types of nozzles. All right. Uh, 
we have holocon nozzle uh -huh. uh, which is this one here this is used for a curry side and uh, pesticide as well in the farm, mm -hmm. spraying other crops. Okay. And then uh, we have uh, deflector nozzle. Okay. It's used for, for herbicide. So they are not the same? No, they are not the same. Mm -hmm. And you will realize the difference mm -hmm. during uh, spray application. Okay. The emission from, mm -hmm. from, from, from these nozzles. All right. That's where you'll see the difference. Because uh, this has a wider swath, swath width mm -hmm. and uh, this one has a circle. And that's why it's called uh, a holocon. Uh -huh. Yeah. For each type of pest and disease comes its own nozzle, which Puffid say are very important for getting the best results. Holo Corn Nozzle. This is a general purpose nozzle. Use this nozzle when spraying to protect crops against diseases, to kill common insects such as aphids, and for spraying livestock against ticks. Flat Fun Nozzle. Use this nozzle when spraying selective herbicides, which will kill weeds while not harming your crop. You can also use it for spraying insecticides. Reflect or deflector nozzle. Use this nozzle for spraying systematic herbicides and fungicides. These chemicals must get inside the plant to work properly. Before you go to buy any herbicide, you need to know what type of weeds you're going to spray. Mm -hmm. Because we have uh, different types of herbicides. We have uh, selective and non-selective. What do you mean by selective and non-selective? Yeah, there are some herbicides which once you spray, they kill everything mm -hmm. which is there in the field mm -hmm. and selective they are used for weeding mm -hmm. when maybe you have your crop which has grown then you can apply the selective upside it will leave your crop and kill the weeds mm -hmm. yeah that is the difference All right. No, we are here now to advise our farmer and all our farmers within this region mm -hmm. that now this is the best way to handle our weed uh, problems. All right. So we need to do uh, a systemic uh, herbicide before land preparation. Uh -huh. So we kill these weeds completely. So this is done before planting? Before we are planting, yeah. Uh -huh. sure. Now Victoria has a piece of land where she would like to grow more crops. Eric suggested we spray using a non-selective herbicide that are applied before planting the crop. Typically, from several days to just before planting. So, Victoria, yeah. is this something you will practice? I'll practice it. Uh -huh. I've seen something so amazing. Uh -huh. Now we'll change the way we spray. We'll be using this way. Wow. Yeah. Eric. Yes. What would you tell our farmers? Selection of herbicide is very important. Know what herbicide you need to apply where uh -huh. on what uh, weed. Very important. And above all, you must use protective gears. Wow. Yes. There you have it. Yeah. I'm not going to add any more. Thank you very much. Sir. Right. Okay. So, remember to get the right herbicide. So, Victoria, yeah. the championship up team has been here. What, what, what stood out for you? You have educated me more. And I'm going to implement all what I've learned from you. Ah, uh, that's yeah. so. That's As from today. Keep it up, you're mm -hmm. doing a great job. Yeah. Well, Caro? Our work here is done, Tony. Okay. Yes, and so we'll see you in the next Shamba!